Throughout the Pokemon series, you can stumble across a handful of NPC trainers with shiny Pokemon on their team. In the Alola region, there is a tourist who has a shiny Execute, and pays out with six nuggets when defeated. In Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green in the Trainer Tower in the Sevi Islands, you can find multiple NPCs with shiny Pokemon. Trainer Tower is its own can of worms in this regard, as in the Japanese version of Fire Red and Leaf Green, the tower strangely works very differently, with the player using Nintendo e-reader cards to assemble each floor of the tower. Depending on which floor you place them on, the Pokemon on these teams could even become shiny where they weren't before. Like I said, it's a strange topic, and the YouTuber Mr. Let's Play It has made a very detailed dive into this location already. For those of you who have come across these shiny Pokemon, have you ever wished that you could just reach out and just snatch it from their team to add to your own? I have too, and speaking of the e-reader in Generation 3, there's one more place where you can find NPCs with shiny Pokemon, Moss Deep City. As part of the functionality of the e-reader in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, you can scan cards from the Pokemon Battle E series that have pre-built teams for you to battle against in the basement of an old man's house in Moss Deep City. If this is sounding familiar, that's likely because I made a video talking about this exact same feature back in February. To sum up that video, there are four Battle E trainer cards in this set that have shiny Pokemon. Dragon Tamer Craig's Salamence, Collector Hidehiko's Breloom, Triathlete Natsuko's Relicanth, and Lady Moet's Gardevoir. In that video, I attempted to use a glitch found in Ruby and Sapphire that allows the player to force an NPC trainer's Pokemon into a wild encounter by knocking out the roaming Latias or Latios that spawns after you beat the game, which then makes the NPC Pokemon catchable. When we tried to catch these Pokemon, however, they turned into bad eggs, which meant that they were essentially unusable. But today, I hold the keys to the kingdom to getting guaranteed shiny Pokemon in Ruby and Sapphire. To start, let's go a little bit into the why of bad egg. If you yourself have ever encountered a bad egg, it's likely that you were doing something that Game Freak really didn't think you were supposed to be able to do. Those who have used the Pomeg Berry glitch in Pokemon Emerald to manipulate the game's internal memory have likely seen a few cartons of them, and those who have used an action replay or similar cheating device probably have as well. So what exactly is this thing? Put simply, if a Pokemon's data doesn't match what the game expects it to be, it will fail what is called a checksum, which is a data validation method that makes a code based on what data is expected, that will be different if the data is then altered. Checksums have been used by games for decades, often being used to check if a game's code has been modified to deter cheating. So the question then becomes, why does the Latios glitch result in a failed checksum? Every player in Generation 3 has two five-digit numbers that can range from 00000 to 65535. One of them is printed right on your trainer card, called your trainer ID, and is also shown on every Pokémon you catch or hatch. The other is called your secret ID, and, as the name implies, is never meant to be shown to the player. These two numbers are responsible for a few things throughout the series, the most notable of which is determining if a Pokémon should be shiny or not when generated. Now that we know about these numbers, imagine you're the game, and the player has just caught a wild Pokémon. Great! Let's check what ID numbers the player has, and then... the Pokémons, and... These are... different. But if the player just caught this Pokémon, then it should have the player's trainer ID. Very suspicious. Because the game sees this mismatch, our Pokémon fails the checksum and is banished to the egg dimension, never to be seen again. But what if they did match? Imagine if the Pokémon we just got off this NPC's team just so happened to be an exact match for our trainer ID numbers. If there's no mismatch, then it would have no issue letting it through, right? Well, we don't actually have to guess on that front. In the other video, I also mentioned that Battle Tower opponents work with this glitch, which is exactly because the game assigns the player's trainer ID and secret ID to all opposing Pokémon in the Battle Tower in Ruby and Sapphire. So with that in mind, let's set our sights on catching Dragon Tamer Craig's shiny Salamence. The first step would be to start a new save file so that we can have the same trainer ID and secret ID as Craig, which would be... Oh right, they never tell you. Well, this seems like quite the hurdle. Without knowing Craig's exact five-digit trainer and secret ID, we would have to just roll the dice, beat the game, track down Latios, and catch Salamence to check if we got it right by chance. The odds that two trainers have the same trainer ID is 1 in 65,536, 
four times less likely than finding a wild shiny Pokemon in these games. But the odds that they have the same trainer ID and secret ID is a staggering 1 in 4,294,965,200 96. Needless to say, I can beat Sapphire in about 3 hours with some power leveling shenanigans, but the odds you actually catch one of these e-reader shinies by chance is pretty much zero. So then how do we make sure that we're not just shooting in the dark here? It's not like Craig's trainer ID and secret ID are just written down anywhere, right? Well, not in a way you or I could read. In order to inject all of the data into the game to set up the battle with Craig, the e-reader has to get it from the dot .code strip, and that means that those ID numbers have to be somewhere in there as well. Militia of the Pokemon Ribbons Discord is a very talented e-reader enthusiast, and she provided me with a tool that shows all of the juicy, obfuscated e-reader information on Craig's card. From here, we can see that Craig has a trainer ID of 00223 and a secret ID of 00000. Well, now that we know that, it's just a matter of resetting until we get an ID of 223 on our trainer card, and then hope that we get the 1 in 65,536 chance to have the zero secret ID, right? Not exactly the best shiny hunt I've ever heard of. So let's pull another ace out of our sleeve, RNG Manipulation. Now at this point we know exactly what values we want, but getting them to appear by sheer luck is pretty much impossible. Luckily for us, computers have always struggled with the idea of randomization, and games from 2002 are no exception. RNG manipulation is essentially the practice of using the game's own math against it. If we know what numbers we want to come out and what math the game uses to generate its numbers, we can use that same math to find out what initial conditions, or seed, will produce those numbers eventually. By starting a new save file on a certain frame, we should be able to get our desired trainer ID and secret ID. In Ruby and Sapphire, when determining what seed the game should start off with, the game asks the internal real-time clock what the time and date are, down to the minute. One quirk of Generation 3 Hoenn games, though, is that this internal clock is controlled by a battery on the circuit board, which is notorious for running dry. If the battery is dry though, that means the game always gets the same response when it tries to ask the internal clock. By using this info, we can see that the first frame that we can start our save on to get the right trainer ID and secret ID will happen in just... 6 months of waiting on the final dialogue box in the opening sequence. If I had tried this just after making my last video on the topic, I would have had one shot at getting this right frame and if I missed it, I would be only two months into the next reset. Obviously, this isn't going to work with a dead battery, which means it's time to reveal another trick. By using a Sapphire cartridge that has a working battery, we can use a piece of DS homebrew called RTC Read to pull a little Animal Crossing magic and simply tell the game what time and date it should think it is. By doing this, we essentially control all of the initial conditions to determine the starting seed of the game, and by extension, we can find an initial seed that gets us our desired trainer ID and secret ID combination in just a few minutes rather than six months. After a bit of calibration with a program called Eon Timer, we can guarantee that we land on the right frame by checking our trainer card in the moving truck and seeing those magic numbers 00223. As the final bit of preparation to pull off this glitch, you unsurprisingly need to spawn the roaming Eon Pokémon. So we use a bit of power leveling in another save file in order to beat the Elite Four in just a few hours and spawn Latias. With everything set up, it's time to heist. The glitch will cause the remaining Pokémon of the last trainer you lost to to be sent out after Latias is defeated, excluding the first Pokémon in their party. By scanning in his e-reader card, we can set up a battle versus Dragon Tamer Craig in Moss Deep City, and intentionally throw the match. We then fly to Mauville City, as it has the most surrounding routes that Latias could appear on, and move back and forth until we end up in the same route at the same time. By using a repel with a low-level Gengar that will block anything other than Latias from spawning, we then use a mean look to trap her and switch into our level 100 Latios. Finally, at the moment of truth, we throw a Master Ball, and check our party. And as we had hoped, 
Salamence was caught successfully. Because of our matching trainer ID and secret ID, we had perfectly mimicked Craig's form, fooling the game into thinking that there was just some normal shiny Salamence encounter. Speaking of, because we have the trainer ID and secret ID of Salamence, we're able to take them to the Name Raider, who sees nothing wrong with letting us nickname this Pokémon, and allows us to give it the perfect nickname, Craig. Finally, to make sure this wasn't just a quirk of Dragon Tamer Craig having the Battle Tower stamp, I also tried this on Collector Hitahiko, who has a trainer ID of 00203 and a secret ID of 00000. We were also able to successfully secure his shiny Breloom. While I don't own the cars for Triathlete Natsuko or Lady Moet, I'm sure that their shiny Pokémon would also work with this exploit. So after 8 months and multiple readjustments and extra software, the answer to this question I posed back in February, can you use the e-reader to catch shiny Pokémon, is yes, if you steal the other trainer's identity first. And for those curious, the Pokémon doesn't set off any anti-cheat flags when brought up into Pokémon Home, so I may or may not have collected a bunch of ribbons and brought Craig up to Generation 8 while I was making this video. Thanks for coming with me on this little forbidden shiny hunt, and thanks for watching.